Here are some statistics to start us off on infertility issues. Firstly, approximately 9% of males and 11% of females of reproductive age worldwide suffer from infertility issues. Next, we have one in three infertile couples are due to male infertility, whereas two out of three are due to female infertility. Next, Sertoli cells only syndrome is a leading cause of infertility in men with approximately 10% of infertile males having SCO, whereas PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome is the leading cause of female infertility with approximately 10% of infertile females having PCOS. And lastly, 99% of male infertility can be resolved and about 90% of female fertility issues can be resolved through doctor intervention. Now for a brief history lesson. In approximately 1752, Dr. William Smalley was one of the first doctors to acknowledge and test theories surrounding infertility. Although, even though he acknowledged it, it soon became a phenomenon to only blame the woman and couples for fertility issues. Next, we have 1978, which is when the first successful case of an in vitro fertilization occurred in Oldham General Hospital in the UK. This was done by Steptoe and Robert Edwards. The baby was named Louise Brown, and this was coined the first test tube baby and a huge leap towards aiding infertile couples. Next is 1990, when male infertility became more widely accepted and studies surrounding male fertility issues became a more prominent source of study. They studied men's ages, weights, activity levels, hormones, and more to see if there was a significant decline in sperm count as men got older or changed their habits. This was important as many felt as though this could be used to test the viability of female oocytes as they aged as well. Lastly, we have the present day, where many new and exciting treatments are being discovered daily. Since in vitro, there are many more tests, medications, hormones, and procedures available to men and women throughout their reproductive years, and there will always be new discoveries. Named after Enrico Sertoli, an Italian physiologist, Sertoli cells are a specialized cell type found in the testicles. Specifically, they are located in the seminiferous tubules of the testes and they facilitate the production of new sperm, or spermatogenesis. Sertoli cells have many functions, one of which is secreting a number of substances that maintain and stimulate spermatogenesis. A number of other hormones and compounds are also produced all of which are involved in nourishing sperm cells through the later stages of spermatogenesis. Sertoli cells are also responsible for formation of the blood testis barrier, which partitions blood flow from the seminiferous tubules. This physical barrier is not a strict barrier, but rather is formed by the very tight junctions between individual Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells are also required for male sexual development, and in puberty, once spermatogenesis has begun, Sertoli cells are unable to proliferate. This means from that point on, no more Sertoli cells are created, and any damage to existing Sertoli cell populations can be permanent. Now let's look at some common terms you'll hear throughout the presentation. Azoospermia is one that you'll hear frequently. Azoospermia is a term used when no sperm has been found in the ejaculate of a male patient. Next is FSH, which is follicle-stimulating hormone, which aids in testicular growth and creation of sperm cells. Then it's LH, which is also called luteinizing hormone and aids in the production of testosterone. Next is TSH, or thyroid-stimulating hormone, and this aids in sperm count and hormone regulation. The next two are important to this case, and so a testicular puncture is when a needle is used to collect semen from the testicles to aid in the counting of sperm, and lastly, a testicular biopsy, which is where a small incision is made into the testes and a small amount of the semen is taken in order to count sperm again. This is only typically done when the results from the testicular puncture are inconclusive or unsuccessful. Next is background info. So the case study surrounds the syndrome called Sertoli cell only syndrome, or SCO. This is where only Sertoli cells line the seminiferous tubules. If you weren't sure, Sertoli cells are typically found near the basal lateral portion of the seminiferous tubules and are one of the most important cells in facilitating sperm projection. When someone is suspected of having SCO, tests can be done to determine the severity of the syndrome and are then labeled into two categories, type 1 and type 2. 
Type 1 is where there are no sperm present at all, whereas type 2, there are some viable sperm present, although unfortunately, SCO is irreversible and can only sometimes be treated to increase sperm count, otherwise ICSI, also known as intracytoplasmic sperm injection or sperm donation, are the way to go. Now on to our patient profile. Our patient is a 35-year-old male presented with fertility issues. He had slightly smaller than normal testes, normal testosterone and LH levels, although had slightly elevated FSH levels. He also came to the clinic and presented a file of tests previously done, which included spermograms, which tests how fertile a male is by testing his semen. These tests showed azoospermia as a potential issue. Lastly, his wife was present and agreed to an urocyte extraction, which showed no signs of fertility issues. The tests performed on the patient include a physical examination, which is like a routine checkup to ensure nothing is visibly abnormal, a karyotype ultrasound, which determines if there are any genetic disorders or chromosomal defects within the patient, a testicular ultrasound to reveal any cancer cells or cysts, an azoospermia investigation to test the levels of FSH, LH, TSH, and total and free testosterone levels. Azoospermia refers to when there is no sperm present in the ejaculate. This investigation will help reveal any abnormalities in hormone levels that could explain the azoospermia and infertility. Additionally, a testicular puncture was performed to attempt to extract sperm from the patient. A testicular biopsy was performed to determine the cause of the patient's infertility. This is typically the last case scenario and only used to finally diagnose a patient when no meaningful results are collected from any of the previous tests. The karyotype ultrasound results revealed a 46XY result with no changes, which is normal for a male. However, the testicular ultrasound revealed a small volume of hydrocell and testicular cyst on the right, as well as no varicose dilation of the pampiniform and peritesticular plexus. The physical examination was also normal, with no abnormalities or signs of deformities. The azoospermia investigation revealed total testosterone levels at 204.84 nanograms per deciliter, calculated testosterone at 5.33 nanograms per deciliter, FSH at 14.88 milli international units per milliliter, TSH at 1.12 micro international unit per milliliter, and LH at 9.4 milli international units per milliliter. All values were within normal range, however, LH was slightly elevated. The results of the test performed can be found in this table. The references column refers to the accepted value ranges of each test. As the physical examination and azoospermia investigations were relatively normal, more tests had to be performed to determine the diagnosis. The testicular ultrasound and elevated LH levels revealed the most concerning abnormalities which are characteristic of exclusive Sertoli cell syndrome, or ESCS. The next test performed was a testicular puncture, which resulted in no sperm extraction after multiple attempts. The final test performed to determine the diagnosis was a testicular biopsy. The biopsy revealed the complete absence of germ cells and seminiferous tubules covered in only Sertoli cells. The patient's diagnosis was ultimately exclusive Sertoli cell syndrome or Del Castillo syndrome. This results in an irreversible infertility with no further treatment options. Unfortunately, there are no treatments for the condition itself as it is extremely rare and irreversible. Alternatively, many patients tend to opt for donor semen to carry out the pregnancy. The only other option is a testicular puncture, which is only available to those with type two of the syndrome. However, it is only successful in about 13% of males who undergo the treatment. As seen in this case, it was not successful for the patient. The advances that have been made for medical research towards Sertoli cells only syndrome have been quite minimal. Currently, there are only a few treatment options available for the disorder and very few treatments are successful. It is quite rare to have a patient be able to have a biological child even after their treatment. 
The current treatments that are available are sperm retrieval and then having an intracytoplasmic sperm injection. With these two combined, though rare, these treatments have been found to work for some patients that have this disorder. Even with these treatments present, greater emphasis has been placed on doing further research to aid in the diagnosis and treatment of this disorder. When it comes to advances in medical research towards male infertility in general, the molecular and genetic factors that impact spermatogenesis and fertilization have been specifically highlighted. For example, sperm DNA fragmentation was investigated and was found to lower the rates of pregnancy when present. With this in mind, there have been efforts in finding a system that will allow the undamaged sperm to be sorted out and then used for fertilization. CAP score is an example of a test which is able to measure the viability of the sperm after capacitation. Capacitation is a maturing of the sperm that occurs along the female reproductive tract. If there are defects present, it can impact the fertility of the sperm. With this in mind, being able to sort out the sperm that is not impacted will increase the rates of fertilization. Therefore, it is clear that emphasis has been placed on researching more effective sperm tests that can be done in order to increase the chances of fertility in males. When it comes to advances in medical research towards female infertility in general, greater emphasis has been placed on being able to increase the fertility of older women. It is believed that in the future, women past the age of menopause may be able to have biological offspring. Also, women who have undergone chemotherapy may have treatments available to increase their fertility. Additionally, genetically abnormal embryos can be repaired instead of being discarded. The main focus for fertility treatments in women is to reduce the expenses associated with them and making them overall more accessible. Therefore, the advances in medicine related to female infertility are more focused on future breakthroughs associated with the reproductive age of women as well as genetically fixing embryos. In conclusion, the case study investigated was found to be of a male who had Sertoli cells only syndrome. Three tests were conducted to effectively diagnose the patient. Firstly, high levels of LH were found, as well as discrepancies were present in the testicular ultrasound. Secondly, a testicular puncture was done and no sperm was extracted, even though it was done multiple times. Finally, the testicular biopsy revealed that germ cells were absent, with only Sertoli cells being found in the seminiferous tubules. Due to no treatments being applicable to the patient, donor sperm was utilized. However, it was ultimately rejected by the patient's body, resulting in no embryo being made. This led to the oocytes being frozen, as well as the couple having to undergo counseling. In the future, emphasis for research regarding this disorder should be placed on treatment options that can be done in order for patients to be able to have biological offspring. This can be done in various ways, such as examining the genetic and molecular factors involved in fertilization and spermatogenesis. Overall, male infertility is a condition that is not fully understood and requires more research in order to develop efficient treatments to combat it. And now for our discussion question. So based on your understanding as well as research knowledge, what are some directions in which research should focus on with respect to a Sertoli cell only syndrome cure? You can let us know in our discussion for group number one.